Ronald Smelser and Edward J. Davies' the second's book, The Myth of the Eastern Front, the Nazi-Soviet War in American Popular Culture, is an important look at the misrepresentation of history by both the victors and the vanquished alike. The author's central thesis is that the Wehrmacht was completely complicit in Hitler's war of aggression in the Soviet Union, and that after the war, key leaders in the United States and Western Europe fudged the historical record, along with the German generals, to lay blame for the German atrocities in Russia at the hands solely of the SS. This view was established to exculpate the German military during the war, just at the time West German military aid became essential during the Cold War. America and the West needed to undergo a psychological shift from seeing the Germans as the enemy and the Soviets as friends to viewing the Germans as allies and the Soviets as a threat. The German generals, complicit in the Nazi crimes in Russia, were only too happy to aid in this fraud. Memoirs such as that of Guderian and von Manstein added to this altered historical record along with the work Halder did for the U.S. government on creating an official history of the war, a work for which he was personally decorated by President Eisenhower. The German army was extraordinarily skilled at the operational art, but lacked the resources and technical training for the kinds of intelligence and logistical work that is essential in modern warfare and which benefited the Allies so well. When the decision to invade the Soviet Union was undertaken by Hitler, the general staff knew the army couldn't efficiently feed and supply itself over such long lines of communication. This practical desire to keep the army fed and supplied meshed perfectly with Hitler's racial theories of Slavic inferiority and Nazi-Prussian anti-communism. Therefore, the order to live off the land was given, effectively sentencing the Soviet peoples to a new program of terror, murder, and violence. This is not a liberal or a biased view. It is simply the truth. Every responsible historian today accepts it. See Bartov, McGergi, Erickson, Glantz, Kershaw, Galately, the list goes on and on. The authors include popular perceptions of the war on the Eastern Front today in which history buffs and historical recreationists view the war almost as that of the good Germans versus the evil Soviets. Hitler's destructive terror in the Soviet Union in no way should erase the horrors inflicted upon the Soviet peoples by the Stalinist regime, but they do need to be properly recorded alongside them. A common scenario among these buffs, so the authors state, is the belief that if only Hitler had not meddled in military affairs, the Germans would have defeated the Soviets and the Cold War never would have occurred. The flaws of logic of those who romanticize the Schwastika are mind-boggling. This book is an important addition to Second World War literature and the problems of modern popular historical perception and highly recommended. I should point out that I studied under Dr. Smelser and Dr. Davies at the University of Utah about the time this book came out, and I had the opportunity to actually look over some of the chapters in advance. I very much enjoyed this book, and again, I highly recommend it.